Most people don't learn about personal finance until they're out of school, and it's often too late. That's why we've put together a list of 15 personal finance rules you never learned in school. From budgeting to saving for retirement, these tips will help you get your finances in order and start building wealth. Stay till the end for the full list of personal finance rules you never learned in school. You'll be glad you did. 1. You are your own best investment. Warren Buffett said, The best investment you can make is in yourself. Your education, your health, and your career are all investments in yourself. The better you are at these things, the more successful you will be, and the more successful you are, the more money you will make. So if you're not investing in yourself, you're missing out on one of the best investments you can make. For example, if you're not investing in your education, you're missing out on the opportunity to improve your skills and knowledge. And if you're not investing in your health, you're missing out on the chance to live a longer, healthier life. 2. Money can't guarantee you happiness, but it can provide you with options. The pursuit of riches is not the most important objective in life and being too motivated by it may even be destructive. We think that financial stability is something that everyone should aspire to. Having financial security can provide you with more choices and options in life, rather than being driven by a need to consume. With the help of money, you can choose to work less and enjoy your hobbies more. You can also choose to spend time with family and friends, rather than working long hours to make ends meet. Having the freedom to choose will have a significant impact on how you build your life. To quote J.D. Rockefeller, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the best. 3. You need to have a budget. A budget is a key tool in taking control of your finances. It allows you to track your income and expenses so you can see where your money is going. Without a budget, it's easy to overspend and get into debt. Creating a budget doesn't have to be difficult. There are plenty of online tools and apps that can help you get started. We love to use pen and paper. That's old school, but it works for us. If you're looking for a tool to help you create a budget, we recommend a monthly budget planner. It's a great way to get started on taking control of your finances. Get the link in the description to see what we use. When using a budget planner, it's important to track your progress so you can make adjustments as needed. 4. You need to save for retirement. Retirement may seem like a long way off, but it's never too early to start saving. The sooner you start, the more time your money has to grow and the more money you have saved, the more comfortable your retirement will be. There are several different ways to save for retirement, including 401k, IRAs, and annuities. Just be sure to do your research and pick the best option for you. 5. You need to have an emergency fund. An emergency fund is a savings account that you use for unexpected expenses. It helps you avoid going into debt if something unexpected comes up. We recommend having at least $1,000 in your emergency fund, but more is even better. If you can't seem to save anything, start with $500 and gradually increase the amount you're saving each month. 6. You need to live below your means. If you want to save money, you need to spend less than you earn. This allows you to save money and pay off debt. It's also important to live below your means so you don't end up in a financial crisis. If you're not sure how to do this, start by tracking your spending for one month. Then see where you can cut back. Try to find areas where you're spending more than you need to. 7. You should have multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income are a great way to reduce your financial risk. If one stream dries up, you have others to fall back on. There are several different ways to create multiple streams of income. You can have a job and invest in stocks or real estate, or you can start a side hustle. Check out our top seven side hustles to make money video for more ideas about this. The important thing is to diversify your income so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Eight, you need to get out of debt. Debt can be a major financial burden, the sooner you can get out of debt, the better off you'll be. 
there are several different ways to pay off debt. You can use the debt snowball method, where you focus on paying off your smallest debts first. Or you can use the debt avalanche method, where you focus on paying off your debts with the highest interest rates first. Whichever method you choose, make sure you stick to it. It's also important to make a plan for how you will avoid going into debt in the future. 9. You need to build good credit. Good credit is important for getting loans, renting an apartment, and more. If you have bad credit, it can be difficult to get approved for anything. That's why it's important to build good credit. You can do this by making all your payments on time, keeping your credit utilization low, and only applying for credit when you need it. 10. You need to understand compound interest. Compound interest is when you earn interest on your investment, and then you earn interest on that interest. It's a powerful tool that can help you grow your money. The sooner you start investing, the more time your money has to grow, and the more money you have invested, the more interest you will earn. For example, let's say you invest $10,000 at a 10% annual rate of return. After 10 years, you will have $25,937, and after 20 years, you will have $67,275. The important thing to remember is that compound interest works over time. So the sooner you start investing, the better. 11. You need to know your net worth. Your net worth is the value of your assets minus your liabilities. It's a good way to measure your financial health. To calculate your net worth, add up the value of your assets and subtract your liabilities. Your assets include your savings, investments, and property. Your liabilities include your debt. If your assets are worth more than your liabilities, you have a positive net worth. If your liabilities are worth more than your assets, you have a negative net worth. This means you owe more money than you have. 12. You should automate your finances. Automating your finances means setting up automatic payments for bills and savings. This helps you stay on top of your finances and avoid late fees. It also helps you make sure you're saving money each month. To automate your finances, set up automatic payments for your bills and savings. Then, make sure you have enough money in your account to cover the payments. 13. You need to have financial goals. Financial goals help you focus on what you want to achieve. They can be short-term, like saving for a car, or long-term, like retirement. Setting financial goals gives you something to work towards. It also helps you stay on track and make better financial decisions. When setting financial goals, make sure they are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. For example, a goal to save $10,000 in one year is specific, measurable, and time-bound. But it's not relevant if you don't need the money for something that's important to you. 14. You need to start saving early. The earlier you start saving, the more time your money has to grow. It's never too early to start saving for your future. If you start saving when you're young, you can take advantage of compound interest. And if you start saving early, you'll be less likely to have to rely on credit cards or loans. 15. You should invest in a diversified portfolio. A diversified portfolio is a mix of different investments, like stocks, bonds, and real estate. This helps reduce your risk and gives you a better chance of growing your money. As a general rule of thumb, stocks are high growth and volatile, while bonds are low growth and stable. A market downturn is an opportunity to get more shares at cheaper prices if you don't plan on selling your stock for many years. After all, you shouldn't be concerned about how much money you may make if you sell now. When it comes to selling in the future, you should care about how much money you can save over decades rather than how much money you can make right this moment. If you plan on selling stocks in the next few years to support your current lifestyle, it's ideally that your asset allocation isn't significantly slanted towards stocks. In this, if the market crashes, you won't have to freak out. What are some important personal finance tips that everyone should know? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.